poor country will suffer under greater tyranny than what it suffers now. It cannot be. Alas, I find my nature so inclined to vice that foul Macbeth... Did I have doubts? Absolutely. But then again, I don't think I've ever been in a show, no matter who it's written, what period it's from, where I haven't had doubts. That's just kind of who I am as an artist. There were doubts in whether the, the, the words would be as appreciated as William Shakespeare's words were. There were doubts in whether the music would flow into the piece as well as it actually ends up. Whether, you know, you would meet the demands of the piece itself. Ring the bell! The most challenging thing about doing this is, of course, having all the preconceived notions that I had having played Macbeth three times before. And on thy blade uh, are stains of reeking blood? Yes. And wicked dreams abuse. And wicked dreams infect the health of sleep. Oh, Duncan, hear it not, for tis a bell. Oh, to bring my coronation and thy and, and you come in with all the preconceived notions and all the things that you know to be true about Shakespeare's Macbeth, and a lot of them remain true in this production as well, but there's a lot of variances. Don't change the couplets. Trying to uh, check my preconceived notions at the door took me several weeks. When I was offered the role of Lady Macduff, of course, yes, thank you, I'll, I'll take the role, that's wonderful. And then they sent me the script, and suddenly I was like, yes, I get to play Lady Macduff. The world mistakes, the glories gained in war. He really took the kernel that Shakespeare had provided of her kind of righteous ferocity and just expanded on it and created, I think, a multifaceted woman. The curse of Macbeth has struck and during rehearsal this time, what happened to me is I got an eye infection, so I'm wearing an eye patch. But fortunately, I'm not playing Lady Macduff. I'm playing Lady Macbeth. So if anyone's going to have an eye patch in the show, it should probably be me. <laughs> Unsex me here. The music has been so powerful an element to me. That music inspired me playing the character that I play. Come and fill my breast with gall instead of milk. With Davenant's Macbeth, it, it almost feels extremely timely and modern in its in its style of adding music and streamlining and making the language more kind of immediately accessible and understandable. We're trying to do honor to the Restoration style, which, as with all the conversations with the scholars, we realize we don't exactly know what it was. We just know that there was one, and so trying to come up with, with one that fits the world and is very theatrical and then to make it human and accessible for an audience and not jarring. That to me has been my favorite thing, trying to create our restoration style and who knows where that exists, but it is different than what we would do if we were doing, you know, let's do a 21st century Macbeth. Now that the audience is here, they have informed me so much that what I have been doing is okay. There's things that are funny that I never thought they would be when I say, uh, I laid the, the daggers, daggers ready. ready. He could not miss them. And had he not resembled my father as he slept, I would have done it. <laughs> and there was this huge laugh. And I was like, what? It was just funny because I'm so single-minded in this play that that's almost a toss-off. Seems like there's an appreciation for what I was afraid was missing is a totality that they're enjoying. The scene I think the most about is Davenant's scene between Macbeth and Lady Macbeth in Act Two. Why do you labor still to be unjust? There has been too much blood already spilt. Make not the subjects victims to your guilt. Can you think that a crime? Which you did once provoke me to commit? Had not your breath blown my ambition up into a flame? Duncan had yet been living. You were a man. And by the charter of your sex, you should have governed me. The very first night, there was a murmuring in the house of like, ooh, this, this doesn't ever happen. And uh, that really piqued my interest. And I thought, this is, this is going to be a fun ride. The people that I've talked to thus far, uh, I've been overjoyed at their response. So from that perspective, yeah, it feels good. It feels good to be doing what we're doing and creating what feels like a uh, something beyond just 
a, th a theater. It feels like a true work of art on all of us. I'm utterly exhausted, but I am thrilled and I can't wait to run it for the next couple weeks and find out what's in there. Take the time not to remember, oh, I need to get in this light and I need to do this and make this quick change and all the technical elements. Really start to explore this character in this play in this world. And I'm excited to be able to take the breath to do that.